everybody, welcome back to another Sup Border video. In this video, we're going to be looking at a new brand to us, a brand that we haven't seen before. It's a Swedish Sup brand called Black Cat. They've been making paddle boards for two years and it started off with two friends in Stockholm, very much wanting to focus on making good quality paddle boards that have a good sustainable lifespan. And it's clear to see when you go on their website that they do really focus on touring boards. Yes, there is a few all round boards in the range there, but really sup touring boards, you can see there straight away, bungees, bigger bungees, many things that we've asked for many other brands to be put in these guys have already been putting them on their paddle boards, which is why we've been really excited to get on these boards and give you a full touring comparison of their touring range. So let's run through the boards we've got to review. We've got some pretty cool names as well. We've got the Hellraiser, which is the one down here. We have the Black Witch and we have the White Witch. Three different sizes. The White Witch is the smallest board in the range. That's 12 foot six long and 30 inches wide and six inches thick. The volume is 340 liters. That board when we weighed it, weighed 11.69 kilograms. And that retails at 9,490 Swedish Krona or about 769 pounds. Next up, we have the Black Witch, which is a 14 foot board by 29 inches and six inches thick. That they're saying is coming in at the same volume at 340 liters. And when we weighed that one, that's 12.2 kilograms. And that retails at 10,490 Swedish Krona. That's about 850 pounds. And the biggest board they've got down here is the Hell Racer, and that is a 14.5 inch board by 27 inches wide at six inches thick. And again, they're saying the volume is 340 liters. When we weighed that board, that came out at 12.5 kilograms. And the retail price is 11,490 Swedish Corona. That's about 930 pounds. But it's important to note they are the full retail prices. I know you can actually get them a little bit cheaper on their website at the moment, but if you are gonna be importing them or exporting them, you are obviously gonna to have to pay taxes on top of that. The constructions of these boards are all exactly the same. They call it the Black Magic L construction. That's basically a pre-laminated drop stitch material, which is quite light. The boards have also got stringers, which are extra PVC layers. They call it the carbon stringer, but it is just a PVC reinforced stringer on top and bottom, which does give that board a little bit more stiffness, which you'll see in our reflection test. And also some of you eagle-eyed people that have seen some of our past posts will have noticed that the way that these boards are constructed gives them the refined board nose. What that is is where the nose is pulled in more, giving a much better profile when you're paddling. And also, because of that, it gives you a better rail construction as well because they pull the rail material, the first layer of the rail material, quite close together, which gives you that refined nose, but also gives you another layer of protection on the rails. So really, black cat boards are designed and have been made to stand up to what they say, which is basically sustainability and quality. So for us, the finish of the construction is really good. But not only that, there's other things you can bring into the equation when you look at quality and finish of the board. Big thing to look at is the PSI pressure. Now this has a recommended PSI pressure of 15 to 18 PSI, like many boards do, but has a maximum recommended pressure of 25 PSI. You've not heard me say it in other videos in the past, if a brand is willing to put their badge on it, which says you can pump it up to 25 PSI, saying that they are really do trust a lot in their product and their manufacturing. And also another really good telltale of the quality of the board is actually how stiff it is. So all the boards we review on SUP border, we put through our deflection test, which is where we put them on a gap of 1.5 meters apart, and we put a weight of 75 kilograms on the middle of the board and we measure how much the board bends or deflects. Have a guess, at 17 PSI, so in the middle of the range that they sort of advise, we were getting 11 millimeters of drop with these, which is really pretty stiff. And I think if you went up to that 25 PSI, maybe we should have done it. You might be right up there at the sort of nine millimeters in deflection. So you have got a proven fact there with the deflection that these boards are well made and they're still actually not that heavy, which is really what you want for touring. You want a stiff board that doesn't weigh a lot and obviously you need a lot of bungees and other things which we're gonna speak about now. 
So all of the three boards have the same bungee handle setups. Black Cat really have thought about it. Now you can see straight away they're fairly big. So you're gonna be able to get a large amount of cargo, a big dry bag under the front or the back. But there's so many more neat little features than that. For a start, oh, looking at this front bungee here, they've got two simple little clip carabiners that you can unclip. When you wanna put your cargo in, you can either put it in that way and bring the carabiner in, or you can undo both of them, insert the cargo right in the middle and then overlap the bungees and click them back on. A really quick and easy system. And we know many tourers personally that have designed that system on their existing board. So they've, they've basically changed their bungees. They've put little carabrina snap shackles on to make that system. So Black Cat have already installed that for you, ready to go. The back bungees hasn't got the carabiner system, but it has still got a large area that you could put stuff in. And again, they're not too far back on the board or too far forward on the board. So you are gonna be able to access the dry bags easily when you're standing on the board, which is exactly what you want and need when you're touring. We've been saying it for so many times in so many videos, the bungees aren't quite placed in the right place or they're too small or too far forward. There might be some small tweaks, which we'll speak about later on, but really very, very nice indeed. Another feature that touring boards must have is handles. You've got a nice handle at the front, nice handle at the back. You've even got side handles in front of the very big, chunky, comfortable central handle. Now, why is this so big? Another touring thing. If you put weight on the front of your board or on the back of your board, maybe the handle isn't in the right position at that point. But if you have a larger handle, you can shift your hand to the front or to the back to adjust that balance. A simple little move there, but again, shows it's been designed by people who actually go stand-up paddleboard touring. So with the deck pad, you've got a EVA crocodile skin style deck pad. Nothing fancy and it's not that big. There isn't any kick pad at the back of the board there. Some tourers maybe would still like a kick pad, but most tourers at the moment, they're going away from kick pads because they'd rather have more bungees at the back. Also, you'll see that they have added and put on their extra D-rings so you can buy a shoulder strap separately if you need a shoulder strap as well. The way the boards are finished off with their graphics and the colorways, I personally think look really good. I really like the look of the White Witch. It's a personal thing, but I really do think they've finished off very well with the color patterns. There's other nice little things and features that they've added onto here. Just simple stuff like the leash D-ring. It's got a little bit of wording on it. It says, don't be an idiot, use a leash. It just shows them that they're real paddle boarders and they're focused to make sure you have a good and safe time on the water. The outline shape on these boards isn't anything extreme or anything super special, but it doesn't have to be. It has to have a good amount of width going towards the tail, a small square tail. It's gonna give you a good amount of stability if you're moving around the board, but really it's there for carrying more weight. So you're gonna be able to carry more weight front and back and still have a nice stable board. The White Witch, 12 foot six, the Black Witch, 14 foot, and the Hellraiser, 14 foot five. The longer board's gonna paddle faster and the Hellracer is narrower as well at 27 inches. It's an interesting one, the Hellracer. It's called the Hellracer, but actually it's 14 foot five long, which technically means you wouldn't be allowed to enter a 14 foot class race anyway. But take away the name, if you're gonna be going touring, most of you are actually wanting to paddle a board that's gonna paddle as easy as possible give you as much glide as possible and going for a longer base board, especially if you're paddling in more flatter water, is gonna be a much better option. If you're paddling in rougher conditions, and maybe that's why they've given it a bit more width here, the White Witch in 12 foot six long, it's gonna be a lot easier to use in those choppier waters. But again, if you're using your touring board, a lot of flat water, a lot of rivers, a lot of lakes, a lot of canals, when it doesn't really get choppy or above knee high in swell, then definitely opting for the bigger boards is gonna be better for you. These boards can obviously take a lot of weight because they're all six inches thick and they've all got pretty hefty volumes. Definitely the sweet spots I think for the White Witch is probably gonna be 75 to 100 kilos. The maximum weight you probably could get on that is about 115 kilos. The Black Witch is a bit narrower, so again, 75 kilos, probably about 95 kilos. Maximum weight about 110 kilos and the Hellracer 
70 kilos to about 95 kilos probably 100 kilos 105 kilos at the maximum obviously with the maximum weights here it's all about your riding ability i wouldn't expect you to jump on this board as a sort of moderate intermediate and be able to ride it if you're over 105 kilos but obviously if you're a more experienced paddler these boards will physically take the physical weight when you're paddling these boards they feel nice and quick and easy to paddle that's for a number of reasons one is it's got a relatively flat rocker line which is what you want when you're paddling a board to paddle further you don't want a board that's too bendy and the other one is again back to that refined nose so any chop that hits the board basically the nose just penetrates straight through the water yes you might get some water over onto the deck of the board your your cargo up here will probably get wet but it still doesn't push you back as much as having a big fat nose that generally tends to stop you a little bit when you're paddling. So all these boards have got that refined nose, so it's gonna really make paddling a lot more enjoyable, especially if it gets slightly choppier. All the boards are finished with a central US box fin, and they come with a nine inch touring plastic fin, which is a pretty common fin that a lot of tourers are using. It's nicely swept back, so it's going to get rid of most of the seaweed or weed down the rivers if you hit stuff. But for all our touring adventures, that's pretty much a standard fin we would use. If we look at what you get as standard with the package, you get a coiled leash, you get a two-way Bravo super pump. It's all logoed up with Black Cat and it's in their colorways. Those pumps are really easy to use and you can easily get that pressure into the board. You're gonna get up to 25 PSI with that pump, but bear in mind, it's gonna take a little bit longer than those bigger double chambered pumps you can get from some other brands. But if you're into touring, the Bravo Super is probably the best compromise between size and weight to take that with you. Another thing you get as standard is you get a nylon bladed aluminum shafted paddle. Most of you who are gonna be going for this would probably rather not have this paddle or would definitely upgrade for a glass or carbon shafted paddle that you can get if you look on their website. This paddle itself is pretty basic and I wouldn't expect people that are really gonna be paddling these boards or going a little bit further to be paddling with this paddle. That doesn't mean you can't do it, it is adequate and it's going to get you onto the water and it's definitely going to get you into touring if you wanted to get into maybe paddleboarding using these boards but most of you have probably already come from paddling before and you maybe even own your own paddle so either opting for a better paddle upgrading for that or selling the paddle on afterwards would be a better option because it's probably not a paddle you're really going to use the bag that the boards come with is very nice let's just say it like that it's really well engineered it's got some good padding it's nice that you can move the chest strap up and down you've got a waist strap you've got wheels inside the bag it's a green color so it's very easy to see stuff it's neat how they've done the logoing and the finishing and the handles on that bag i've even heard that they've done a pull test on each of these handles to 60 kilograms so you're not going to expect to have one of your handles of your bag pull out that's the sort of stuff that we like hearing about and definitely it ticks that sustainability that they keep talking about on their website. Also at the back of the bag, if you don't want to use the backpack straps, you can fold them away. So maybe if you're flying with your board, you can tuck all that away. Definitely the bag is really nice. It's in in keeping with the boards. It looks good, it feels nice and it's easy to get the boards in. So these boards have probably got your attention if you're a SUP tourer, but are there any negatives or things that you need to be aware about about the Black Cat touring range? Well, there is a few, and to be fair to Black Cat, we are being quite harsh on you when we're really saying a few of these. Like one of them is, these bungees are amazing, okay? Probably the best bungees that we've seen from any other brand regarding the size and where they're placed on the board. But we think if there was an extra eyelet or a D-ring here that was put into maybe the EVA pad just here, we could have the ability to bring our cargo further towards our feet, which we find quite handy when we're actually paddling. We don't actually want to have our stuff right at the front. You could even mod your board and bring the bungees up onto the front handles here, which would do the same job. Another thing is an awareness thing. Again, it's not a massive one is the side handles here are actually quite small. So if you've got big hands, you will probably struggle to use that. I mean, for me, that fits snugly, 
but I understand that they would have wanted to have them relatively small so they don't stick up and catch on stuff when you're paddling along or putting your cargo on and off. So again, it's a compromise, isn't it? Another small thing that's potentially a bit neat, but I'd actually personally like it, is underneath the board there is sort of how to paddle instructions on the board. Now I think that's pretty cool, but at the same time, somebody who's buying a touring board for me, I wouldn't want how to paddle on the bottom of my board because I'm already a pretty experienced paddler. And I think many of you out there who are going to be buying to these boards would probably be the same. So I do think that makes the boards look a little bit cheaper, to be honest. But again, that's another splitting hairs thing. The only real negative that's a real solid negative that Black Cat have definitely got to change in the future is the packaging. There was a lot of plastic wrapped in these boards, which is a real shame because it doesn't quite hit that sustainable message that they're pushing. The boards I can see are gonna last years and years and years, but that packaging, definitely, that would good to see that change. And the last thing is really an observation that maybe Black Cat can have a think about, is a lot of paddlers are asking us about 4.75 or 4.7 inch thick boards, so thinner touring base boards. I think it would be really good if Black Cat had a thinner touring board in their range, because there's gonna be a lot of lighter paddlers, sub 70 kilos out there, that are gonna be looking at these going, oh, I love all the bungees in the bag and everything, but I can't quite get it in a thinner base board because a lot of those lighter paddlers don't wanna paddle these super high boards, especially if you're paddling in more windy conditions because they can affect the side of the board. It's a personal thing. Some of you lighter paddlers like these six inch thick boards, but a lot of you are opting for the thinner base boards. So maybe in the future, that might be something that Black Cat can think about as well. But in all, Black Cat have got a really good range of touring boards. Really good to see a proper range designed by tourers for tourers. There's going to be a lot of you who are going to be really interested to get onto these and obviously paddling some good distance with them. All these boards come with a one year warranty and an availability. You're definitely going to have to get onto the Black Cat website and see if they can ship to you. They do a lot of international shipping, but obviously taxes and things are going to have to go into that. So definitely worth a bit of research. But if you're into touring and you really want to paddle places and paddle with a good amount of gear on your board, we definitely think the Black Cat range is possibly the nicest touring range we have seen from one brand so far. So well done Black Cat, keep up the good work and we look to see the future developments in the future. I hope you found this review interesting and informative. If you've got a Black Cat board and a touring board in particular, definitely let us know your comments and feedback about that. Also look out for the review of the Black Cat Whitewater board which is going to be coming out soon. We've got Beth working on that right now. But until next time, we'll see you on another video. Happy paddling.